I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. Where I end up, well, I think only God really knows. I sat on the setting sun, but never, never, but never, never, I never wanted water once no never 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 I listen to my words but they fall far below I let my music take me where my heart wants to go I swam on the devil's lake, but never, never, but never, never, I'll never make the same mistake. No, never, never, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy winter. <laughs> um, so I want to just say welcome. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock. Um, also, if this is your first time here, I want to extend a special warm welcome. And also, for all of you that are joining us online, welcome. Thank you for being here with us. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for sharing your unique energy with us. Uh, my name is Rena Schroeder, and I will be your platform assistant for today. Uh, our guest speaker, I am really excited that is, she's a dear friend of Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock, is uh, Reverend Mary, Mary Beth Spear, and also her husband, Rev, Reverend Michael, is with us too. So thank you for being here. I'm looking for, oh, and the title of the talk, Infinite Pie. I was just wondering, I was thinking this morning, infinite pie with Thanksgiving, is that calorie free? <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's start in prayer. So please join me. Divine Spirit, thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you all who join us wherever they are. We know that we are one in spirit and we are ready to open our hearts and our minds to your inspiration. Thank you each person who has prepared the way for the experience that unfolds this beautiful morning. We know that there are no coincidences and accept that all that happens is for our good in the name and through the power of Jesus, the living Christ. Amen. And please join me in uh, as we recite the uh, Unity Five Principles, uh, which is the foundation of all that we do here. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. The Christ Spirit lives within me. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I experience God's presence and power through prayer and meditation, and I put my faith into action by demonstration. Thank you. Here at Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock and Unity Worldwide, we're about living life that is more spiritual than religious. This means that we believe there is a Christ presence in you and that is available and capable of guiding you on your unique path. Unity represent, respects all religions and does not discourage any practice that supports your best and highest expression. We do not insist on any type of action or ritual that to accomplish the goal of experiencing your divine nature. We just provide the tools that may assist you in listening for it. I gotta take a moment, I have to adjust this mic. It's actually, I couldn't follow the material, it's blocking, sorry. 
So this time I want to say a special, oh, okay, need more sound. Okay, here. Is that better? Okay. Um, I want to extend a really special, I don't know, thank you to, uh, to our tech team, you know, for all that they do and, and, do and provide for us here, making this happen. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, George Mulligano, makes everything happen, and, and Joe Jaziak, who does amazing videography work. Also, a special warm welcome to our music leader today, Ken Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. A Rafi song. One light, one sun, one sun lighting everyone. One world turning, one world turning everyone. One world, one home, one world home for everyone. One dream, one song. One song heard by everyone. Ah, 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 ah. Oh. Center into a time of reflection together. Please sing, sing along if you know this one. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. For all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. All that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. For all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, 
I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I invite you to close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you. And just take a beautiful, deep breath of life. And intentionally, consciously exhale that breath. And take another deep breath at your own cadence and release that breath with intention. And I be begin this time together, this meditation, in gratitude for that breath, for it is a thing of life. continuity of life. And it is said that God is as near as our heartbeat and as close as our breath. And as we breathe, we intentionally focus on God. We say, God the good, omnipotent, omnipower, everywhere present, omniscient, all-knowing. And there are other names for God. The Alpha, the Omega, the All that is. the universal mind, absolute source, the infinite field of limitless potentiality and possibility. There's so many ways we can think of God. Each of these names we give it assigns some level of nature of what it is to us. Another name for God is your name and mine. For that which is infinite in scope, never ending and boundless, must contain us there's nothing that can be outside of it. Therefore, we are one with it. And like a cosmic internet, it is all one thing. Complete, whole, and always expanding. And what I know for us today is we are one with that one. Its name is our name. And we individualize it. And we use it with every thought we think, every breath we breathe, every step we take. We are being it. And this mind, this power, this presence that has no limit is our mind, our power, our presence, and the only limit we experience is our belief in that limit. So we bless this day. We bless everyone here. We bless everyone here in presence and online. For we are all here by a divine invitation.
what comes forth for us today, we take out into our worlds and we spread the God spell, the good news, that there is no duality in divinity. There is no separation between any one of us and our source. We say namaste. The divine in me honors and recognizes the divine in you. So I honor that place within us where the entire universe resides. I honor that place within us of love, of light, of truth, of peace, of beauty, of joy, of harmony. And I honor the power within us to be consciously aware of our indwelling divinity, first and foremost in ourselves, and then for all humanity everywhere, with no exceptions. I invite you to take a moment of quiet now and imagine this idea, this namaste, encircling the world like a human wave that began with you. Truly, in this moment, let there pe be peace on earth, and it has begun with you and me. We take a deep breath and let it out. And I say, thank God, thank God, thank God. And so it is. Amen. Mm. And when you're ready, come back. Good morning. <laughs> Are you all out there rippling? <laughs> A little challenging to get back from that, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity Woodstock Spiritual Center, the spiritual center of the universe as far as I'm concerned, and probably one of the most picturesque and uh, well-known campuses, in, uh, at least in the United States, thanks to Groundhog Day. And everybody runs around after church that's been here for the first time, as we did with maps in hand, you know, looking for Gobbler's Knob. <laughs> so, but this church is so beautiful, and every time my, my husband Michael and I come here, you've done something even more wonderful to it. So thank you so much. This is a gorgeous church. Anyway, I'm Reverend Mary Beth Spear. Um, I've been a longtime pastor. I'm not a pastor now, but my husband and I uh, co-pastored two churches over about 15 years, and then we stepped away from that and I am kind of a work in progress in terms of what different aspects of new ministry I am doing kind of church without walls these days but it's always such an honor when service you're in. Just set an intention that you're going to be different when you leave. Set an intention that something might happen where you might actually get a little bit of a shift and sometimes that little tick of a shift can move you in a completely new and wondrous direction. Kind of like if you're 
I don't know if any of you sail, but when you sail, it doesn't take a lot to tack one way or tack the other way, and you kind of course correct and move around, but you don't go just in a straight line. So I'd invite you just to set an intention that you're willing to pr just contemplate the idea of being moved somewhat by the time you leave here. When you walk out, you go, wow, something happened. Uh, there was a person by the name of, of Sri Eknath, bleh, um, Sri Eknath S. Warren, who made a statement that says, in the ordinary choices of every day, we begin to change the direction of our lives. <clears throat> I'll say it again without the cough. <clears throat> in the ordinary choices of every day, we begin to change the direction of our lives. And so for me, you know, setting the intention, sometimes it's as easy as going, you know what? I walk in here, I empty out, I know nothing. Now, what can I know? <laughs> and get curious. So in, I invite you to do that for yourself. Well, <clears throat> it's, November, and for me, November, usually almost a whole month, is kind of synonymous with a gallop to Thanksgiving. And then, of course, it's the crash dive into Christmas after that. But right now, for me, it feels a lot like Thanksgiving, particularly the weather today. And for those of you who are online in the sunny area somewhere else, we have had a real blast of hello winter this morning. So we're all comfy in this church, but it's pretty cold out there. And, you know, things change. Things change a lot. We've had a lot of changes lately. We've had change in weather. We've had a recent election. And for the first week now, we're not seeing all those ads. It's kind of nice to take a breather. Oh, we got the Thanksgiving thing going on. And my husband and I have a very interesting thing going on for us, which is we are completely demolishing and remodeling our main level of our house, and we can't even live in it right now. So we're actually taking up residence in another community. So it's, it's kind of, it's sort of like being on a Twilight Zone vacation <laughs> that, that is sometimes fun and sometimes a little disarming. But uh, one of the ministers that used to be over at the Unity Northwest Church, um, Greg Barrett, R Reverend Greg, he always had a saying that he'd have a say, he'd say, he'd go, change, I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. So let's try that. <laughs> With feeling, change, I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Oh yeah, you know what happens when you do that? That's like a little blank check, you know, you just gave the universe. So you gotta like, strap in because if you meant it, you may see some change going on. Michael's about to get up and pass out a, a little sheet for each of you. And it goes in, in accord with my title of my talk, which is Infinite Pi. And that's what we're going to be talking about today because, we, you know, we don't just give thanks for. In unity, we, get, we don't do thanksgiving, we do thanks living. And I want us to be able to go away today with a sense of what it is to be thanks living in this month of thanksgiving. As Michael's doing that, I want to give you a little background on infinite pie because this is not an original thing. I wrote this poem. I wrote this poem probably about, oh gosh, almost 20 years ago when I was a very green behind the ears uh, minister, brand new minister, and or I guess that's wet behind the ears. Green behind the ears sounds kind of awful. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I, oh, I mix my metaphors. <laughs> but uh, uh, I came up with this idea of infinite pie because as we were trying to establish where our church was going to be located, Michael and I had finished our ministerial training and we were getting ready to be new, newbie ministers. And we had a location that we wanted to start our lessons, our church in. The only thing about that is within the organization of which we were a part, um, which was a religious science oriented um, setup, you know, we were part of that. There was some gentlemen's agreements between distances of where churches could be put in proximity to other churches. And it happened that the church we wanted to go into was a Masonic temple, beautiful place, and it was about a couple of tenths of a mile short of the conventional dividing line. And we kind of got met with some competition on that, and we were kind of told no. And having just gone through the multitudinal years that we went through and new thought learning how to think about there ain't no competition when you're working in consciousness, 
it just didn't quite sit right for us. And so as I contemplated, we actually wound up finally getting into the church we wanted to get into. It worked out well. Everything was fine. But in getting ready for our first Thanksgiving, this poem came to me because I began to think about what do we really teach here in, in when it comes to competition, which would equal another synonym for competition is the possibility of scarcity or not enoughness, right? So when I'm going to go over this poem with you, but I want you to recognize that when you read it that the word realm, where it says we live in a realm, the definition of a realm, we're not talking about the world because the world as we know it, the physical world, is the world of effect. And the realm is the world of cause, the realm of consciousness. So the, the word realm means either kingdom or field of activity or interest. So this poem reads like this. We live in a realm where there is only one I, and the I, that is we, share an infinite pie. By right of our birth, we each claim our stake. And the stake that we claim is as good as we take. There are truly no limits to this infinite pie, save the limits we live, no, excuse me. There are truly no limits to this infinite pie, say the limits we see with our limited eye. We partake of this pie every year that we live and discover through living, we get back what we give. So, I want to talk about the difference between finite pie consciousness and infinite pie consciousness. First and foremost, it's Thanksgiving. You know, that one of the things we always did too because we did Infinite Pie Sunday just about every Sunday thereafter at my church. And we would always have a really good um, hospitality thereafter. You can only imagine. We'd have everything from pizza to pumpkin to mince pie. And the one thing we just had as a caveat, we couldn't run out of pie on Infinite Pie Sunday. So that meant the hospitality team had to get to work early. But if you think of pie and you have a pie, and you cut yourself a piece of your pie and you eat it, that's fine. And then my, you know, Michael comes along and gets a piece and Rita gets a piece and you know, Joe gets a piece. Everybody gets, starts getting a piece of the pie. And there comes a point where if you're wanting more pie, you're going to start feeling some scarcity. And if somebody comes along, have you ever noticed when somebody comes along and they have free access to the, the pie cutter and they take an extra big piece of pie? <laughs> now you start to feel a little resentful of the person that took too much pie because now you're not going to get enough pie. <laughs> anyway, you, you get the picture, right? So what about an infinite pie? Okay, there is an old saying, an, an, an ancient saying about God that said, God is a sphere whose center is everywhere and whose some circumference is nowhere. Let me do that one again for you. God is a sphere whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere. Conundrum. <laughs> you know, and one of the ways you can kind of unravel that is with another analogy, and I love analogies. I love using the computer as an analogy to understand the infinite mind of God, the divine milieu, the, the, the realm in which we live. Everybody here pretty much has access to a computer, knows how to work at computers, had your hands on a computer. I, I think you know, we have that as at least a common denominator. And I would presume that most everyone in the room has, at some point, logged onto the internet. So if you think about that set up and you think of the word God, G-O-D, you can also see it as an acronym for gives on demand. Now when you sit down at your computer, you don't go, oh, great God of the computer, oh, I am a lowly, you know, worm of the desk, but please, please give to me one tape. You know, you don't do that with a computer. You kind of plop down, have your coffee, tell the computer what you want to know, and go enter, and then you look at your screen, Take a cup of, you know, sip of your coffee, and usually by the time you get the sip, what's on your screen, but what you asked for. So there was an interface between the local, the non-local, that brought back to the local that which was asked for. Which kind of goes along with what the, the way shower said, you know, seek and you shall find, 
Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. And the key here is you had to do something. You didn't just sit there, you had to do something. So consider now that sphere, infinite, limitless sphere, where the center is everywhere. Now think about it as the internet. Aren't you your user of the internet? Isn't your keyboard, your terminal is the center of your internet world? It's the center of your universe. And when you hit go, it goes out somewhere into the blue, whatever the blue is, and something comes back to you that you asked for. And if it isn't exactly what you asked for, what do you do? You don't start to cry. I have at one point wanted to throw the computer out the window, <laughs> but I didn't. But I would refine my search. So this is kind of how the game of life is played when we're working in the idea of an infinite pie mind. As much as we can take is as good as we can get. So if you think about just even the idea of scarcity, if you, if you think about right back in the middle of a pie, the first cuts look pretty small, right? Sometimes maybe, maybe you're really got your, got your act together and you got a big piece of the pie right at the point. But if you're working on a really big dream, think about it, it might be kind of just the inception of an idea that's a little tiny wedge at the start of that point. But what happens if in your mind's eye you see that wedge begin to grow out and out and out and out into the sphere whose center is everywhere but circumference is nowhere. There's no end to it, save your belief that there's limits to it. So think about what it's like when you're working with the consciousness of either finite or infinite pi consciousness. In a finite consciousness, there are such things as hoarding. Why do we hoard? Scarcity. We're afraid we won't have enough. We've got to keep it, we have to have it. There's no more, not enough, whatever that might look like. And yet an infinite Pi consciousness, they're sharing because there's always enough to go around. My wedge goes on forever, I can share some with you. Resentment is in that finite Pi consciousness. We already talked about that, you take too much of my pie, I'm gonna start resenting a little bit of you. But if it's infinite pie consciousness you're working from, you're celebrating because there's so much to share. And have you ever noticed that when you share from your heart how good you feel? I, um, I study a, a, a person quite avidly, Dr. David Hawkins, who's wrote Power Versus Force. Some of you might have heard of him, but he works with a calibration consciousness. And he has a very, very, very simple way to grow into a higher ascended state of vibration or consciousness and that is practice every chance you get letting someone go in front of you or someone go first. Ah, freeway. <laughs> Think of that, you're driving along the expressway trying to get where you wanna go and this person's coming up and you know they wanna get in front of you and I've, I know certain people who start pushing on the accelerator <laughs> And then you get that little competition thing going on. What if you let him go first? Do you know what that does to you? If you can get out, get over the idea that you, they took something from you. Because you know, that kind of thing, that finite pie consciousness, that kind of activity, what does that do? It causes us to feel like they're getting in the way of our good. True? Don't you sometimes feel like somebody's in the way of good? How about there's two of you, you've got carts and you're walking to the checkout stand and you're neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting in the way of my good. What if instead you let them go first? Or even better, which is even, even makes it warmer and fuzzier, the person behind you walks up with three things and you go, oh, go in front. And they always go, are you sure? No, I'm not sure. No. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure, I want that fuzzy feeling. And it's amazing how when you do it out of the generosity of spirit, how different you feel. And when you feel differently, you now have an ascended vibration. You are, you are in a different place in consciousness. You are now in infinite pie consciousness. There's always enough, enough time, 
enough money, enough love, enough things, all these things that we kind of hoard, it all falls away. Another wonderful expression I learned early on in my metaphysical classes was the idea of things come into my life by right of consciousness. Isn't that cool? So if you missed out on a job, nobody got in the way of your good. That job was not yours by right of consciousness. You know, if you wanted a relationship and somebody else was able to have that relationship that you thought you wanted, that wasn't your relationship. That person came together with another person by right of consciousness. And if it's an infinite pie idea, you go, oh, it's getting closer. I can see it in my world. Now I'm going to claim it in my life. Do you see the difference in this? You know, and this comes down to, there's a wonderful um, statement that um, um, Einstein makes. I'm going to find it here. Um, where is it? Shoot, it's out of order. Hang on. Think, talk among yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to somebody. <laughs> Here it is. Um, he made that, that statement, and many of you probably heard of this. One, he, he, there are two ways for you to live your life. One of them is as if nothing is a miracle. Wow, it's finite pie consciousness, right? The other way, the infinite pie way, is as if all things are miracle. Now miracle, I love the word miracle, because it, I understand in Spanish, mira means to see or to look. So, for me, mirror call would be to look differently. Because, you know, a miracle is not something you see. It's the changed idea that brings forth that which manifests that you then can see. That's what we call a miracle. But a miracle mind is simply an infinite pie consciousness. So let's see. I, wanna, I got, so you know what? My, I get so excited about this stuff. It's like if I were to try to give you everything that I thought about all week, it would be like me trying to give you a drink of a fire hose. <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> Just some of the really cool ideas, you know, think of the um, Louise Hayes visual for, for prosperity. She gives a beautiful visual if you're feeling scarce about money. is to it, it, picture yourself standing at the edge of the ocean of abundance and prosperity. And then look at your hands and what's in them. And if you're having that finite pie consciousness, you're going to have a little tin cup or a little cracked dish or something. But if you're in infinite pie consciousness, you've got a pipeline because you know you're in flow. And the universe must give because it's its nature to give. You know, the definition of true love is the self-givingness of spirit to its creations. God loves to give. So I wanted to give you a couple of examples, and I'm getting a little high sign here, so I know I'm getting close to the edge of my um, giving you that drink out of the fire hose. Um, <laughs> the idea that there is anything that's in the way of you having the best life from this point forward is finite pie consciousness. I, I love some of the ministry I do is I do book study groups, and it tends to be that the people I attract tend to be older. I don't have a whole lot of younger students. I have older students who are either my age, and I turned the young age of 70 this year, so I tend to have people kind of right around my age and older, a few younger, but what's real cool is that we are not thinking of ourselves as you know, over the hill and going down. You know, I, I think of us as sizzling seniors. <laughs> And I love that Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, I don't know if you've heard this, you probably have if you hung out a couple of weeks in a Unity church, but one of his magnanimous quotes in, the, in his 90s was, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do that which ought to be done by me. Whoa, I just want to keep sizzling, don't you? That is infinite my consciousness, I just love that. I have a dear friend who was Michael's and my uh, sponsor back in the 90s and early 2000s when we were brand new ministers, and he is now in his 80s. But at the age of 79, he gave up pulpit ministry down in Fort Lauderdale 
and he's a co-founder of this one, one of the oldest retreats, uh, New Thought retreats there are. Uh, it's called Big Sky Retreat. Some of you may have heard of it or gone to it. And Dr. Charles Geddes, at the age of 79, re-careered his entire ministry and is now joined in on trying to wake people up to how to heal uh, racism and the, the divisiveness that we have. And he created a whole ministry called MYOB, Mind Your Own Becoming. And he literally picked up and at the age of 80 moved to Montana. And he's happier than he's ever been. Now he hasn't been in Montana for the past week because he flew to California to perform a wedding of a dear friend, Dr. Elizabeth Marshall, who got married at 94 last week. <laughs> So let me give you one more, because age is not a thing. You know, it's okay to be young. See, sometimes, oh, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'm too, th and, and fat, by the way, I'm, Lizzo is my very favorite person to watch these days. And if, if you have not seen Lizzo, you're, you want to give yourself the gift, because she is a very happy woman and plays a great flute. Uh, but I wanted to share with you, this is a, this is a very contemporary um, experience here. Many of us had never heard of Maxwell Frost. Anybody heard of Maxwell Frost? You will, and I'll tell you why. Because he's 25 years old, and he is the newest member of Congress. He was elected last week from XGen. And it's said that he is a self-identified organizer and musician, and he's going to bring a lot of new perspective into Congress, because Congress' average age is 58.4 years old. So this 25-year-old guy come, came from an immigrant family, he was adopted. His grandmother moved to Florida from Cuba in the early 1960s, and he was a Congress elect who, who noted on his website that his biological mother was caught in a cycle of drugs, crime, and violence while pregnant. Without access to health care, she made the, the very challenging decision to let him go and have him adopted. Because of all he saw his family go through, he got into politics. And as a young organizer, he worked with Democratic campaigns. And one, an important one, was a state-level ballot initiative that passed in 2018. So I did the math. He was about 20 at that point. Couldn't even drink yet, I guess. And which restored voting rights to over 1.6 million Floridians who had previ previous felony convictions. He won by 58% of the vote. That's infinite pie. So I'd like us to end off. Everybody have your infinite pie sheet now? Do you have one? You got this? This is what I do with my students. If there's ever a feeling of separation between you and the material you're reading or working with, this is a simple little trick that will take it home. And that's that you put things in first person. So what I'm going to do is lead us in reading this poem together out loud, if you'd like, and we're going to put our name in it instead of we, and let it see if it, if it lands differently for you. I live, you can, you can join in with me, I live in a realm where there is only one I, and the I that is me shares an infinite pie. By right of my birth, I stake my claim and that claim that I uh, stake that claim in this and the stake that I claim is as good as I take. Sorry, I give that up. There are truly no limits to my infinite pie, save the limits I see with my limited eye. I partake of this pie every year that I live and have discovered through living I get back what I give. So I wish you a happy Thanksgiving month, and I encourage you, please, partake well of your infinite pie. Thanks, everyone. Namaste. Kind friends all gathered round Something I would say What brings us together here Has blessed us all today 
Love has made a circle that holds us all inside. The strangers are as family, and loneliness can't hide. You must give yourself to love. Love is what you're after. Open up your heart to tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Walk these mountains in the rain. I learned to love the wind. I've been up before the sunrise. Watch the day begin. Always knew I'd find you, but I never did know how. But like sunshine on a cloudy day, you stand before me now. It's easy. You can sing it too. You must give yourself to love. Love is what you're after. Open up your heart to tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Born in fire, it's planted like a seed. Love can't give you everything, but it gives you what you need. Love comes when you're ready. Love comes when you're afraid. Be your greatest teacher, best friend you have made. You must give yourself to love. Love is what you're after. Open up your heart to tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Let's sing it again. Give yourself to love. Love is what you're after. Open up your heart to tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Wow, wow. I can't wait till this talk and music gets posted on YouTube, this service. I need to watch this one a couple times. <laughs> I don't know if everyone knows, we are on YouTube. <laughs> it's all there. Um, hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so this is a time in our service to collect and accept your tithes and donations. If you would please go ahead and take out your gift. And if you're online, you can go over to our webpage, unitywoodstock.org, and click on the Joy of Giving tab. Here at Unity Woodstock, or Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock, we are self-supporting. All your donations directly support the talks, classes, and events that we facilitate. If you are in the sanctuary with us, please take out your gift and place it in your hands as we bless your gift here. Those of you online, please hold your gift to your heart. We acknowledge these blessings with you in a short prayer. Please join me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. For those of you in the sanctuary, the greeters will gratefully accept your gift at this time.
For all these gifts and for all you givers, we say all together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock is a ministry based in prayer. You can fill out your prayer request forms at the prayer station right over here to my right and, uh, and drop them off in the prayer box. Your request will be prayed over uh, for 30 days by our prayer team and Silent Unity. Or you can meet with a prayer chaplain on duty today. Jackie, are you here? No? Oh. I guess we may not have a prayer chaplain with us today. Um, for those of you online, uh, please email your prayer request to us at info at unitywoodstock.org. Um, next is announcements. So for upcoming events, you can check the calendar at our website, unitywoodstock.org. We have a number of uh, important ones here. Uh, we have great classes uh, we, and study groups. We have the Christ Mind uh, study group that meets on the second and fourth Saturdays, both online and in person here in the morning. We have Mind Shifters with Dr. Tim Hayes on Tuesday evenings. That's online. Uh, we, if you're uh, looking for a volunteer to volunteer, we have some great opportunities. Uh, also, there's an open admin position to help in the office. Uh, now, this is important. And one moment. Uh, we're doing, we're supporting the Turning Point organization here. It's a great nonprofit, and we're supporting them with gifts, uh, both uh, through cash and checks, also gift cards, and also uh, to give uh, uh, unwrapped items uh, for, for Christmas. Uh, the last date for giving is December 4th, and uh, this is being uh, hosted by uh, Eileen Brannigan and Karen Peterson, so please reach out to them, and they're all here. Uh, and also, we have the, what else do we have here? Oh, the Christmas tree uh, walk. That's at the Opera House this year. We're having a planning meeting tomorrow night on Zoom. Uh, Carol Hubner is, is, uh, is chairing that. And today, after service, the outreach team is having a planning meeting for next year. Uh, so this is a great time if you'd like to participate. It's going to be sometime after fellowship. We'll have a, a planning meeting. And that's being uh, organized by Maria Pizzuto Webbs. And last, we have a, a very special event for Christmas Day. As, as you know, Christmas is on a Sunday, so we won't be having service here. But uh, Rev. Mary Patrice is organizing a Christmas Day event at, uh, at uh, Rebecca and John Hegner's uh, retreat center. It's uh, going to be in the morning through midday, and it's going to sound like a wonderful event. Uh, if you're interested in, in joining, Please send in uh, your email request to info at unitywoodstock.org, and that will go directly to Rev. Mary Patrice. And last, we have a special uh, update on our financial campaign, and our financial growth team is going to join us. <laughs> Good morning, friends of USCW. I'm Mary Perrin, leader of your financial growth campaign, along with team members Wendy Green and Reverend Ann Schmidt. Exciting news today. We have surpassed our third tier of $15,000. As of November 6, we are at a grand total of $16,355. This money is deposited in the bank reserve fund for our center. Thank you to all who have sent in a lump sum gift 
or a monthly pledge. We really appreciate your participation in our financial growth campaign. Those of you who are pledging a monthly amount, we appreciate your commitment through October 2023. This is a year-long campaign, and we are accepting any lump sum gift or monthly pledge at any time. A reminder to indicate reserve fund on the memo section of your check or electronic transfer. This ensures that it gets to the correct USCW fund. If you have not yet participated, we acknowledge and encourage you to pick up a yellow pledge card in the foyer. Our next service announcement will be when we reach $20,000. And we are grateful for all friends of USCW. Keep the momentum going to enhance our spiritual home. You are contributing to completing our goal of $25,000. Thank you. <laughs> I think I need a whistle. <laughs> I think I want a whistle. <laughs> oh. Where are we? Oh, we did that. We did that. Oh. Prayer. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's do that. <laughs> so if you'll please join me. Oh. Boy, I, that whistle's really throwing Yeah, okay, please stand. <laughs> I, uh, so please join, the, join and let's join here together in the... I'm thinking of infinite pie here. Huh? The, light of, <laughs> the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Join in the peace song. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god as creator family all are we let Thank you. 